Hey everybody, my name is Jeffrey Way and welcome back to a NetTouch quick tip. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to add syntax highlighting to your code even on a simple HTML page. We're going to be using a JavaScript solution rather than something that requires a specific server-side language like PHP. So we'll be looking at Google's tool, Google Code Prettify. Again, this is JavaScript based, so it's simply a matter of uh, importing a script file, a CSS file, and calling a function, and you're done. It's really amazing. So let's get started. First, I go to the downloads page and download the tar file. Next, I will unzip it, and you can see here we have a handful of folders, including YUI Compressor, the Clojure Compiler, but mostly what we need is within this source directory. We need to import the JavaScript file and the CSS file, and these additional language script files will be referenced automatically. We don't have to do that manually. So let's create a test project to try this out. Using a tool you can get on CodeKenyon.net called Structure, I will create a new base template and I'll call it sample. Next, I will delete our zip file and I will open this directory up and rename this to highlighter. And then we will drag that into our project. And we're all set to get started. So let's drag this into a code editor. And now we need to import prettify.css and that's within the highlighter directory. And it's called prettify.css. And next, let's import prettify Js. And I will go ahead and get rid of the type attribute because that's no longer required. Next, we need some code to prettify. So we'll place it within pretags. And for now, I'll say var jeff equals jeff. Something simple like that. Now, if we were to view this in Chrome, you're not going to see any syntax highlighting just yet. And that's because we need to call the pretty print function. Now, they'll tell you to add it to the body element, but that's probably not good form. Why don't we instead reference it within an external file, or we can do it at the bottom of our page. And we will say pretty print. Next, this function will run, and it's going to look for any pre-elements or code elements that have a class of pretty print, like so. And now we should be all set to go. But if I come up here, it looks like I spelled that wrong. Let me fix that really quickly. Save that, and now I'm gonna view this in the browser. And sure enough, you can see it's taking up the entire width of the window because we don't have a container. Of course, in an actual project, that will be limited to whatever the width of your container is. But sure enough, it is being highlighted. So if I come back and we were to add maybe an anonymous self-invoking function, and we will say var jeff equals jeffrey, anything like that, and sure enough, it will automatically highlight that. And look, what's also neat is the fact that it will auto-detect what the language is. But if you wanna override it, you can type space, lang, dash, and then the language, JS or HTML or CSS, whatever you wish. I find most of the time it does a great job of auto-detecting what it is. Now, what if we also want to apply line numbers? Well, we can add a space and type line nums colon and then what the beginning line number is. And this is really helpful for a tutorial where if you want to continue where the last snippet left off, you could set the line number of the first line to 20. And then if I refresh that, you'll see 20 right there. And why don't we expand this? I'll simply create a bunch of these so you can see the effect. Refresh. And now we can see the line numbers off to the left. And lastly, what if we want to style the visuals? What if we want maybe a twilight theme or a desert theme? And the Google Code Highlighter offers a handful of ones that you can choose from. So for example, let's take a look. How about desert? This is one I've always been a fan of. And you can see it's simply a CSS file. So if I wanted, I could copy that. And let's come back to Espresso, create a new file, and we'll call it desert.css paste it in, and you'll also want to make sure that you compress that. Let me expand to this. And now if I come back to my index.html file, this time I only need to reference desert instead of the default. Let's try it out. Refresh, and now with minimal work, we're now using the desert CSS theme. So that's as easy as it could possibly be to add syntax highlighting to any project, even simple HTML pages.